Corey, um, how do you sum up the season that was for this team? Mm. <laughs> Heavy hitter right off the bat. Um, I would say that it was a, I would say a roller coaster, honestly. Like there were a lot of high moments and a lot of fun. Um, but there were, I mean, let, let's not kid ourselves. There was a lot of low ones too. And, you know, a lot of looking around, a lot of questions and, um, but that comes with every NBA season in different levels. Um, ours was just a different level than everybody else's. And, um, you know, there's definitely like so much to look back on and grow from and get better from and like be proud of and excited about, um, and that's what this, especially the summer and moving into next season is all about, is just like capitalizing on taking advantage of and like seeing every opportunity possible to make this team better. What do you think playing fast, faster did for the team as a whole? I know you said that you were very comfortable and, and like playing that style, but just as the team as a whole, what do you think it did? Yeah, I love it. Like it allows us to play off of our instincts, to take advantage of lazy defense, um, steal a few easy baskets here and there. Um, and also like it requires more out of us as players. Like you have to be in better shape and you have to focus more. And like when you're running that and playing that fast, like you have to be locked in on everything else even more because you're tired. And um, I love that challenge. And that's the way that I grew up playing. That's the way I feel comfortable playing. And that's the way that I play when I'm at my best. So um, I think it's something that we need to continue to do and lean in and like, lean on more. And, um, you know, if I had it my way, we'd be playing even faster, to be honest with you. Uh, Corey, looking at the state of the franchise early on in the rebuild, obviously looking at, you know, progression of younger players like yourself is more judged, obviously not so much on wins and losses. Mm -hmm. Uh, what progression have you saw from this team overall that kind of gives you hope for the future? Yeah, I mean, it's the the progress. I mean, like we had a we've been we've had a couple of meetings now that the season is over, and we've been asked this question: like, did anybody not get better this year? Yeah. And everybody kept their hands. Everyone got better this year. Everyone kept their hands down, and everybody knows to a man that they've improved. And that was one of our like key pillars in like. I know like central like themes this year was player development and getting better. And like everybody has, um, I know I have, I hope you guys have seen it. Um, I'm super proud of how I've played this year and the way that I've gotten better. And, um, that's the hope for the future. Um, as we get better individually, we only get better collectively, you know, like a rising tide raises all the ships. So, um, we like, if everybody's getting better and everyone's doing their job to come back next summer, or next season better than they were when the season ended, it's only going to be a positive for us. And all of the stuff, more hope that comes from this season is the stuff that you guys can't even see. The stuff that we work on in our locker room, how we grow together in our accountability and our quality of our relationships between players. Like All of that is going to lead to a better brand of basketball, but it doesn't happen immediately. So um, to the untrained eye and the casual viewer, there's no way that they could see that happening. But, like, I promise you that we are so much better this year or so much better now than we were, you know, even three months ago and that stuff. Corey, I, you've talked a lot about the biggest thing you've been impressed about yourself has been your consistency mm -hmm. all season long. How much of that do you think, when we talked earlier about between the ears growth that you took, how much do you think that played a role in your consistency being what it was this season? Yeah, I would say it's like the, it's a, it's a great question. And that's the biggest factor into my consistency. Like in my first two years, like I would hang on to these bad games or bad moments so, so tightly. And I would stress over them and I would lose sleep over them. And then it would affect me the next day. And um, this business, things happen so fast and games come so quickly that the moment that you hold on to, something that you've done previously, like you're, you're screwed. Like the, those things bleed into days and bleed into weeks and bleed into your seasons. So um, the way that I've gotten better at letting things go and letting games come and, you know, riding the highs and lows and knowing that either is or both aren't temporary or aren't are temporary. Um, was super important for me and like a big credit goes to not only the people in this building that have been 
you know, in my corner and helping me work and helping me develop, you know, kind of my little decimal group, but also my wife too. Like this is her, this is her first season in DC. And like when I come, when I came home and like we have a, like, and she played, she understands the game. She comes to these games, not as a fan, but as like, she like, that's, she gets her basketball fix coming to our games. And so we talk about it and um, it's amazing coming, how coming home to her and being able to vent that stuff to her, completely washed away any emotions that I had. I slept like a baby every night. It was the best season of sleep I've ever had. So um, all of that to say, the way that I, I've been able to flush games, good or bad, has been the biggest part of my growth. I actually wanted to ask about the impact your wife yeah. has with regards to the basketball stuff and totally. being able to have those conversations with her. How much of it is her utilizing her basketball IQ and being like, babe, like last night, I don't you know why were you were trash. going this way. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, but in, no, in all honesty, like the, the conversations, is there any, is there ever a time where she's having conversations almost kind of like an extra player development coach? Like, hey, if you had gone this way, you would have had a better opportunity mm -hmm. versus what you did. Yeah, all the time, nightly basis, pretty much. Like, and it wasn't like, uh, it's, she's not doing it in a critical way. Like, she's curious. She wants to learn more and she wants, and she, wants to know more about my game and how I fit into the the NBA game. And um, we have, like, pretty high-level, like, intelligent conversations about basketball, and that's helped me a ton. And credit to her for taking on that kind of stress um, and my stress because as soon as, that, like, there's a creek in the dam and she asks that question, like, the water, it's, it's gushing. So I'm gushing to her, and it feels like it's probably a huge weight on her shoulders, but she handled it with grace and, um, you know, like, corrected me and like got my head back on straight when I needed it. And it takes a lot of guts to be able to tell like a grown man what to do and how to get better. And she did it with grace and um, helped me a ton this year. Corey, <clears throat> Corey, what does the team need from its next coach, whoever it is? Mm. Um, they need, we need a connector. We need, an, we need somebody who runs to or I guess isn't afraid of conflict, runs to difficult things, um, and is a master communicator and connector, I guess. Um, the NBA is all about managing 15 egos and making sure everybody feels connected and incorporated for the betterment of the team. And it's a really difficult thing to be able to do that while also building a great high quality team and raising the level of our play. Um, so just as much as we need somebody who's brilliant on a whiteboard and can draw up X's and O's and read the flow of the game, we need somebody to be able to connect and relate and communicate to us as players. Um, that's pretty much the bottom line. Hey, Corey. Hey. Um, you talked about being consistent and being able to flush out bad games, mm -hmm. um, but X's and O's wise, I remember I sat down with you in like January or something, mm -hmm. and I told you that you had more and ones this season than you had your previous two combined. So would you say using your body more to get into the paint has been one of your biggest jumps in terms of on-court uh, performance, or was it another aspect of your game? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's taken me a while to realize how strong I am. And um, I didn't play a lot in the paint my first two years and even growing up as a kid like I would just kind of run around and shoot threes and um the more I play in the paint the more I realize how much I can use my body and um that's just a, kind of another small detail that I want to tighten the screws on this summer uh is just to be really intentional about how strong I am and how I can use my body to my advantage like I see you guys do it all the time in the NBA and there's no reason why I can't Back in um, October at Media Day, you said that you wanted to take strides on being a vocal leader mm -hmm. in addition to being a lead by example guy. Were mm -hmm. you able to do that this year? 100%. 100%. Um, Corey, you've played with a, a handful, I think, of, of point guards already, even though you've only been here for three years. Um, what do you think Tyus added to the, uh, to the organization? Uh, Tyus is our – Tyus is like our chill pill. He's like our ang anxiety medication. He <laughs> He's able to – see the big picture and tell it like it is, um, but also keep us all locked in and comfortable. Um, he sets the table. Uh, he makes sure everybody's involved and everybody's doing well. And like, he's like a, he's super, super high level at that. Um, and then like, you can just tell by his game, like he doesn't turn the ball over ever. He never gets flustered. Things don't rattle him. And when you have a guy leading your offense that has those qualities, like it's, it settles you in even more. So, um, 
And I've also really gotten, like, really loved getting to know Tyus this year, too. Like, I've, I have a couple friends and former teammates who have played with him before, and before I met him, they were all telling me, like, oh, you're going to love Tyus. You're going to love playing with him. Um, he's the best, you know, and then the list goes on and on and on. And, like, he met those expectations and then also exceeded them, uh, in my experience, playing with him. I've asked you um, just about a number of things that have changed in the organization. I wonder what you feel like was the most impactful thing um, that Will and, and Michael were able to do this year. Mm. I would say that their their communication, you know, not only about what they could share with us about what was going on um, when we made trades this year, they were they were communicated to us before it ever got communicated to us through the media. Um, and even like communication within departments on a day to day, or like if I needed to be a certain place for a meeting in the morning before practice, I knew exactly where to go and how to access that information. So like those things are really important to you as a player when you got a million things going on, like you don't need to, you don't have to worry about where you need to be. Like it helped things run really smoothly, you know, while we were here at the facility or on game days at the arena or on the road. Um, communication lines were always open and I felt like I knew exactly what I needed to do on a day-to-day. -day. Corey, going back to the um, strength question that Bijan asked you about, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want this to come across comical, but how can you balance getting stronger while also not utilizing that strength to mess up the golf game? <laughs> I, it seems like a silly question, but in, I'm thinking of like DeChambeau, Rom, yeah, the strength yeah, that they yeah. have. Like, how do you try yeah. to balance that? Because I know that that is a huge part of your life with regards to like off season yep. and kind of decompressing. Of course, um, I don't think I need like getting stronger. For me, I guess is especially now in this summer is not like adding ten pounds and being like jacked when I come back. It's just like using the strength that I have. I think I have plenty of it. I think I have more than enough to be able to succeed. You know, on the course and on the greens, but. Um, I just need to be able to, that was corny. I'm sorry. Um, it's people learn how to use it and use it effectively. Like it's, it's just something that I haven't really explored and tapped into yet. And, um, just takes reps. Uh, speaking of your, uh, improvement, getting to the rim and finishing mm -hmm. around the rim, how did that change how defenses defended you and how you were able to counter them and attack opposing defenses? Yeah, it changed everything. It changed everything. Like, it seemed like my first two years, if I just put the ball on the floor, the other team was cool with it. And like, they were fine with that. And that's what they wanted me to do. Um, but now that's, it, it felt a little bit different. Like it felt like there were multiple layers to what teams had to do to help stop what I was, what I'm trying to do. You know, like just because I put the ball on the deck doesn't mean it's the job's done uh, for the defense anymore. Like there was help side, there was guys in gaps, there were, you know, rotational defenders that were coming into the play, the mix. And it's a fun challenge for me because now I get to grow my game even more. Like I have to see the picture ahead of time and I have to make the next read and the third read. And um, those things are, excite you as a player. There's more details to add. There's more things to build on. And um, it's a really, really fun opportunity. It's a cool thing as like a player to like feel like you have a little bit more respect from the defense than you ever had before. And like people know that you're a threat. So um, that was really cool. It was just kind of a cool validation of what I've been trying to do and trying to get at for years now. Thank you. In addition to learning how to use your strength, what are some of the areas that you want to improve on on court over the summer? Yeah, this summer for me is all about like details. It's all about, it's not like I need to add a brand new skill to my game or Corey needs to learn how to do this if he wants to succeed. Like, no, it's like, I think I have pretty much everything it's going to take but it's just like small, small details, mastery, tighten the screws on X, Y, and Z. And so it's going to be like a super like intense summer, not as far as like workload or trying to add brand new stuff. It's just like tightening up with the screws and just making marginal improvements on what I have. And I think it's really going to make big, big differences.